I mean, it was clear that women were objectified at Fox. You'd have to be a half-witted Martian not to see that, you know, women's value on Fox is sexual. What wasn't clear was that, you know, Roger was kind of priming women for the enjoyment of primarily a male demographic out there in the world, but that they were also being used kind of for the pleasure of people inside the building. I wanted to try to anchor. He saw that as, what do I get out of that? If you want to play with the big boys, you have to lay with the big boys. Roger was one of the first people deposed in the Me Too movement. We didn't know it was going to be a movement. You know, he, he had an allegation of sexual harassment leveled against him and it ended up costing him, you know, his job. He is defined by what he did to women and by what they did in turn to him. Bear in mind he'd had one before, it had been settled internally, you know, for $3 million and nothing had happened. Bill O'Reilly had had multiple cases, nothing had happened. When Gretchen Carlson filed her suit, and when, in fact, he ended up resigning or being fired, depending on which way you look at it, we knew that there was a chink in the armor and that this was a good time to, um, to make a film about him. My kids are American, my husband's American, you know, I'm in the process of applying, applying for citizenship, so I care deeply about America. We were kind of sold this American dream, and it doesn't seem to be kind of the whole story. Roger Ailes is, you know, has been incredibly influential for decades. He's important in terms of understanding Donald Trump. I mean, Donald Trump, I don't think would be, he wouldn't be president had there not been a Roger Ailes. You can sort of see the arc of the rise of the right and the, the, the rise of, you know, I call it flamethrower TV, where kind of the more outrageous things you say, the better. And that was distinctively an Aylesian sort of invention. And I think the film gives you a kind of lens into understanding the divisiveness of America. It's a cautionary tale. Keep your eyes on other people. Watch what's going on. Are they agreeing with you? or disagreeing. I mean, it's extraordinary. I didn't know this going into the film. Some of the women at Fox get settlements and then you have to sign not only a non-disclosure, which means you'll never talk about it, but you have to sign an agreement that you'll never seek employment again from 21st Century Fox, ever in your lifetime or any of its affiliates. So you're kind of being punished for something that happened to you. And I would say, you know, that's a, that's a big point we try to make in this film. There's this woman called Tamara Holder and she said, all we wanted to do was work. And, you know, if the Murdochs are gonna do something, you know, truly kind of admirable in terms of what's happened at Fox, it's not like saying, oh, I'm so sorry it happened to women. It's bring them back. I do think there's a value in women telling women's stories. Women need to tell women's stories. Women need to tell men's stories too, but you know, there's a, there's a value in getting somebody who can understand sometimes the things that are not immediately visible. And I think a lot of the sort of currents with sexual harassment and sexual abuse are things that are not said. Um, so perhaps that's a value I bring to it. You know, I'm sick of in these discussions about you know, me to people talking about men and what's happened to the men and let's, you know, understand their lives and kind of, you know, the impact of the Me Too movement on, on women. It's kind of, it's really not about men, it is about women. Mm -hmm.